These are Italian chickpea fritters called pannelle, and these are potato croquettes called cazzilli. Both of them are traditional Italian street food that just happens to be vegan. Welcome back to Vegan Cultures, where I explore traditional plant-based food from around the world. When I traveled to Sicily, I tasted two of Palermo's most famous street foods. Panelle, which are chickpea fritters that are served in a bun, and Cazzilli, which are potato croquettes that are also served together with the panelle. Since I'm back, I've been working on a recipe to make both of them at home. So pane, panelle e cazzilli, let's go! Start with 750 grams of washed floury potatoes. I'm using Mary's Piper for this. Just add them to a pan, cover with cold water, season generously with salt, and then bring it to a boil. Now turn the heat down to low and let them cook for around 30 minutes or until you can easily pierce them with a knife like this. Don't worry if some of them burst like this. It can either be because of dry growing conditions or just because the potatoes are old and that's not a bad thing for this recipe. Drain them and let them steam off until cold enough to handle. They are easiest to peel while warm so don't wait too long. Once they're peeled you can let them cool off a little more. And you also don't need to waste the peels. They contain loads of nutrients and fibers so just roast them with a little bit of olive oil and salt for a snack. What? Looks like a perfect crisp. Come on. In the meantime, pick the leaves of 30 grams of mint and finely chop them. Mint easily bruises, which makes it oxidize faster and turn brown. So rolling up your leaves and chopping them fine with a sharp knife and with as few chops as possible really helps here. Now it's time to mash the potatoes. If you've got one, you can use a potato ricer like this, but even a simple fork will do the trick. You want to be quite thorough though to get rid of any lumps, so I usually do this one potato at a time. Add the mashed potatoes to a bowl along with one teaspoon salt, a third teaspoon of pepper and the mint. Then use your hands to work everything into a smooth dough and knead it until it just begins to feel gluey, which is a sign that the starches are working and you don't need to add any extra starch or flour. Now coat your hands with a little oil and shape the mashed potatoes into croquettes. Then let them firm up in the fridge for around one hour. While the cazzilli are in the fridge, we can crack on with our panelle. Those are chickpea fritters made with chickpea flour. And I went to a mill in Sicily to see how chickpea flour is made. It is literally just whole chickpeas ground until fine. So there's no waste with this product. This is the chickpea flour I bought at the mill. But you can literally use any chickpea flour you can get. You can even use Indian gram flour, which is similar, but it's made from husked black chickpeas. It will also work for this recipe. Let's make our panelle. Just grab a small bunch or around 15 grams of parsley, twist off most of the stems and then finally chop the rest. I would also recommend lining your baking tray now because you might not have time for it later on. Now add 250 grams of chickpea flour to a pan, followed by a third teaspoon of pepper, one teaspoon of salt, the parsley and 750 milliliters of water. Then whisk it really well until there are no clumps left. And now it's already time to cook. Bring the mixture to a boil but stay with it. The starches will sink to the bottom so it's important that you keep whisking otherwise they will stick and burn to the pan. Once it begins to thicken like this, turn down the heat and continue stirring with a spoon for around 5 minutes. You want it to turn into a thick batter that pulls away from the sides like this and doesn't instantly level out anymore. Then turn off the heat. At this point it becomes time sensitive because the mixture will begin to set as it cools down. So grab your baking tray and spread the batter out into a thin, even layer like this. Then just set it aside for around 30 minutes to cool down. We've prepped our cazzilli and we've prepped our panelle. I also bake my own burger buns because it's actually quite difficult to get natural vegan ones around here. Let me know in the comments if you'd like to see the recipe for these. But now it's time to fry our Palermo street food. Heat up your oil to around 170 degrees Celsius. Then add around 4 to 5 cazzilli at a time. Don't overcrowd the pan though because otherwise the oil will cool down too much and the cazzilli might fall apart. Once they are golden like this, remove them onto some kitchen paper to drain off the excess oil. By now the chickpea batter will have set and you can cut it roughly into 7x7 cm squares like this. Then fry around 4 squares at a time, turning them once or twice until they are golden and puffed up. Grab a burger bun, add a few cazzilli and top it with some flaky salt and lemon juice for your pane e cazzilli. Or do the same with a panelle for a pane e panelle. Finally, you can combine both of them for a pane, panelle e cazzilli. Here we go, pane e cazzilli. Guten Appetit! Mm. There's a lot going on. Wow. Whoa, okay. The cazzilli are actually really soft, but they have this perfect crunch on the outside. And then the mint adds such a wonderful kick. I remember this from Italy. That mint blew my mind. It's just such a small addition makes all the difference. It really brightens it up. Wonderful. Oh yeah. Okay, and this is the pane panelle. So with the chickpea fritters next. Here we go. This is completely different to the cazzilli. You don't have the crunch. They're actually quite soft, 
but that lemon juice really nicely cuts through the bun and the soft fritters. This is just really humble street food, but it's actually really fun to eat. And how cool that you can cook chickpeas or chickpea flour into a paste and let it set and then create something like that. And the method of cooking chickpea flowers and water is actually quite similar to what other cultures do as well. You have, for example, Burmese tofu or you have Indian kangvi, which both are made in a similar way. But this is the Sicilian way and it's a really, really fun street food. And then finally, everything together. Pane, panele e cazzilli. Let's try that one. I have to say that apart from the crunch from the cazzilli, all the textures are quite similar. So you have the soft bun, the soft fritters, and then the soft filling of the cazzilli. But flavor-wise, you get the roasted aroma of potatoes, fried potatoes, you know what that tastes like. And then also the roasted aroma of the chickpeas. And together with the herbs, it works really, really well. But as much as I love them, I have to say that I sometimes miss a little bit of freshness. It's not traditional, but if you want to give it a go, try this gremolata to jazz it up. To make the gremolata, add 50 grams of parsley, 10 grams of mint, two garlic cloves, one deseeded red chili, and a quarter teaspoon salt to a small food processor. Chop until fine, then add the zest of a lemon, three tablespoons of lemon juice, and four tablespoons of olive oil and mix it well. Drizzle this over the version of your choice and tuck in. Mm. It just adds a really fresh, tangy, and slightly spicy layer of flavor. Give it a go. But these dishes are just another example of traditional cultural food that happens to be vegan. And as so often, it goes back to necessity and poverty. Chickpeas and potatoes are both cheap ingredients, and frying used to be a cheap method of cooking food and adding flavor. So from very little, you can actually make an inexpensive and sustaining sandwich. I'm not claiming it's healthy, but because of the chickpeas, it actually keeps you full for a little longer. So students would come in their breaks to grab a pane panelle or a pane cazzilli, have that as their lunch and then go back to school. So that's how you make Palermo's famous street food. You can find the link to the recipe in the description below. This series, Vegan Cultures, is all about showing how natural, versatile and cultural plant-based food can be. So thanks for watching and as always, wunderbar!